Hello. <laughs> hey, howdy, hey. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sheriff Woody's in the house. <laughs> no, Woody says, howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> or no, that's the shark making fun they're, of Woody. My dad says that to me literally all the time. There's a... <laughs> oh, no, that's a different kind of romance. Um... <laughs> Oh, oh man. god. Yeah. Uh, hello and welcome to this <laughs> this episode of TBR Tuesday. Off to a really strong start. Yeah. <sighs> you know, TBR Tuesday, no holds are barred and there are no rules. So, there are no rules. Quite literally not at all. My light is blinking. I think there may be a ghost with us. <laughs> Can you oh, see that in the video? A little bit. It, yeah. Okay, that's cool. I will. <laughs> well, hello, it's Hannah's fine. ghost. Welcome yes, to hello. the podcast. Maybe they have something interesting to contribute. Maybe they have they a really do. good recommendation. Nothing gets you going like a ghost, so. Nothing does. You know? <laughs> Nothing does. They I, heard uh, and they came. It's not strictly speaking a ghost, but I tried reading, um, well, because we picked it for my book club. So I was, like, mm. actually supposed to read it, and I ended up just not. Actually, there was one – shout out to Courtney. Courtney being the only person in our book club that read the book. <laughs> All the rest of us showed up. Some of us had started it. Some of us had not. I got a few At chapters At least it in. showed up. <laughs> yeah, well, we wanted crepes, so what are you going to do? And they felt bad about it, and uh, I was like, y'all, the whole point of a book club isn't really to read the book. It's yeah. to show up and gossip. That was Exactly. So it's fine. Anyway, we tried reading uh, Just Like Magic. Oh, by... I'm going to read that one. Uh, okay, Sarah I'll Hogle. see what you, yeah. Yeah, you think. Because here's my thing. The premise <laughs> of this book is – The premise of this book is this, like, influencer who her whole family is really wealthy and famous. And so she has been lying about the fact that she uh, made some, I guess, bad deal. She's broke. She's <laughs> lost. Okay, <her> Sam. <laughs> Um, and she's lying to her family about it and it's coming time for Christmas and Christmas gifts are a big deal in their family and she's been like squatting in this dead lady's house um, lying on the internet. Uh, everyone hates her. She's been canceled. She's also just the worst uh, and she's drunk and she plays um, a vinyl record of Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You and she accidentally plays it backwards and when you play backwards it summons the spirit of christmas and the spirit of christmas is a man his name is hall and he is here to make all of her wishes come true but like badly and also he's the love interest and ah uh, listen my it, it's it's like quite bonkers so if you're like yeah, yeah. i just an absolutely insane time go for it um the courtney the one who read it in our book club loved it she said it was great i gave up because i tried the audiobook and the thing that's is what that he's already like buddy the elf like his personality is very buddy the elfish and that's already a lot for me but then on oh top boy. of that, narrator, she does his voice like no Oh, my name is Hall. I am so happy oh. to. I just don't think. Oh. I just. I just don't know. Oh, I have that audiobook in my in my Libby. Oh, you might like it. It's well, worth a shot. However, I. I, <laughs> I know that I don't think Sarah Hogle writes Open Door, so maybe I won't view this man as a sexual being, and that'll be okay. <laughs> It is. I was told it's closed door, so you know there is that. Yeah. I've also told. I, 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 she said it was really fun and just like absolutely crazy. So and see, I've I like the cover. I'm a sucker for anything pink, and like I definitely asked for it for Christmas. <laughs> so maybe I'll just read the physical copy because <laughs> I, I I gave up on Sarah Hogle's. I got five minutes into her first one, the mm. one with the marriage in trouble, and nothing against the book at all, but I. I simply was like, no, <laughs> I just, I wasn't in the proper mindset for it. And so I haven't tried anything by her. So I was like, this could be a good start. Well, maybe. I, we'll see. You might, I think it's one that you either are like, wow, this was hilarious. Yeah. This was a great holiday read. Yeah. Or you're like, why did, did I do that? Just why? why was it? Yeah. 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 I have the, another one by Amy E. Reichert, her Christmas oh, I have that one. one. Once got from Berkeley. Yeah, 
Uh, super cute cover, and it came with a little ornament, so that was fun. Yes. Um, I have that audiobook too, and I'm assuming that one's going to be closed door. I, I have zero I'm not expectations. Positive, but I flipped through the book, and it was a closed door on the scene that I landed on. Nice. Nice. So it's, it's Look at that look. Store. Yeah, cool. I started her um, the coincidence of the coconut cake because my mom she toured uh, the author toured like libraries or something. My mom had seen her, um, and so my mom had read the book, I think, or she just liked the cover because we like coconut in this house. Um, and she was like, "Hey, can you write your favorite word in this book?" When she was getting it signed, and Amy's favorite word was "fuck," and so she wrote that in the book. So I do have a respect for her there. And she said that her publisher had to take out the fucks that she had put in the book. So maybe Berkeley kept the fucks. We'll see. Maybe they're not actual fucking, but maybe it's like we still get something. <laughs> so who's to different say? Different publisher. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I have that one. That's on our, our t- actual TBR. Um, yes. I have that audiobook too in Libby. So I have quite we a shall few. see. We'll do a – when we do a Christmas episode, I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll cover all the various. Oh, I've, my God. I've like, there's a lot so of queer holiday romance, mm-hmm. contemporary holiday romances this year that all came out, and I'm excited for those. There are so many. I am I just love Christmas, and finally, it's after Thanksgiving. You know, I feel like I can actually read them. Because, like, I've been watching Hallmark mm-hmm. movies all October, but, like – no, not October. Oh my God, no, November. I can do months correctly. Um, my mom and I have been watching them all, no- <laughs> all November. I was um, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. all October. We're unhinged. Um, but now, like, I feel like I can break into the vault of Christmas romances, and we've got like the one, the Victoria Alexander with the Santa ornament. Like, I am, I'm excited. Oh, yes. I Well, I guess, I mean, we're jumping into the TBR episode, mm-hmm. the, the what we've been reading slash have read recently, because I have started my Christmas reading, um, which I'm kind of hit or miss with contemporaries, the same way I'm oh, pretty yeah. hit or miss with Christmas movies. Like, I, mm-hmm. mm, it's sometimes it's a little too much holiday for me, which is funny because I'm a seasonal reader, but sometimes, mm. I don't know, it's a lot. I have hopes, I have a lot of historical Christmas anthologies yes. I want to read. But the one that I have started is uh, Kissing Under the Mistletoe. I which is, is that the Sarah McLean Tessa Dare one? No, that's another one that I have on that's my. I have one. like multiple. I have the new one that just came out, Duke in a Box, that I bought. I'm excited for that. I have the digital copy of the Sarah McLean. What is that? The, the, the Duke Sue Stole Christmas, I think, is that yeah. One? I read that one last year, and the narrator Justine Eyre, my enemy, uh, she had no clue what accent she was doing like at one point the guy was scottish but he was in no way shape or form scottish and it was like 12 a.m i was like what are we doing and yeah so i don't like justine air (laughs) but the the anthology i think was like a three-star read that one i think there was one that i really liked i don't remember though i'll probably reread it um well because it's an it's on the list i have Mm -hmm. many that's my Mm -hmm. vibe Um, the um Mistletoe Christmas was good too by Eloisa. That's Eloisa oh, James. Oh, that's another one like, that I have. Yeah. Title leading, yeah. I loved her story. Hers was the best. And then I think it kind of went downhill, but nah. Well, we'll see. That's the next mm-hmm. one. The Kissing Under the Mistletoe is Suzanne Enoch, Amelia Gray, and Anna Bennett. None of which I have actually read before, but I am reading the first one, and it is very clearly like a novella that's set in the like everyone else has already had their romances. Yeah. It's like three brothers. Like she's in a family where all the brothers are married now. Mm-hmm. Like, they, and it's there's a lot going on. And I'm like, who? Okay, <laughs> all of these people must have had their own books because I do not know what's happening. Yep. But it's a cute like. Uh, she's uh like the lady's companion for the mother of all of them, and Aww, uh, she is so she's there in Scotland uh, around Christmas time, and the whole family is there, and uh, she meets a cousin of the the men's fam like their cousin who mm-hmm. is an architect mm-hmm. and a scottish architect who Ooh. is also a widower and uh years ago he had a bad horse riding accident and so he's missing an eye and is scarred uh, excuse me so he's just oh my. a one-eyed scarred very handsome Ooh. quiet architect who is scottish oh. and also a widower what a missed opportunity to he's have like a very cool cover <laughs> Well, because like yeah. this is an anthology, so you can't have a one-eyed yeah. Scottish architect on Makes the cover. Me think of that, you know that, that um, 
Megan Frampton, One-Eyed Dukes are Wild. Yeah. I haven't, and I, I just bought it because I was like, sorry, what? Yep, I Which have titles? an old. <laughs> One-Eyed Dukes been... are Wild. I have an old step back. Um, do not remember the book, but they're in like a body of water and he's got like an eye patch and it's that's very awesome. fun. I know. I know. Anyway, so that's the only – I've started that one. Of, there's three in there and that's the one that I've started. I have that one as well. Um, I think I have two copies of that. So um, I'm living large. And I, I read Anna Bennett because um, that's Susan Enoch, Anna Bennett, and who else? Uh, Amelia Gray. Amelia Gray. I have not read Amelia Gray. Um, Susan Enoch, I only read the one, I think. And that was the most recent uh, one from SMP. Um, what was that? It was the con- like the illustrated cover one. Something with a bed on the cover. Uh, oh, wasn't a huge fan. Something in yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked the writing, but I wasn't a huge fan of the book itself. Um, but Anna Bennett... I read her first book in the Rogue to Lover series, which I did not like, but One Duke Down, which is – I was meant to talk about this anyway, so here we are. Um, One Duke Down by Anna Bennett was the cutest book I have read in such a long time. Like, adorable. Like, How to Be a Wallflower by Eloisa James totally felt like that. Um, there was no third act breakup, I don't think, and, and if there was, it was just like – very minimal nothing dramatic um but it was so fun like this duke washes up on um her beach she's a fisher woman and um he's got like a huge gaping head wound um no amnesia so if you don't like amnesia you don't have to fear but this is kind of like on the vein of amnesia i have a friend who doesn't like the trope but like I feel like you're missing out. So maybe this one would like bridge that gap because I love the amnesia trope. Um, He doesn't remember who attacked him and tried to kill him, um, but he remembers everything else. And so he's like, hey, can I stay on your beach in your little hut that you have like to read in? And like, can I pay you? (laughs) And she's like, sure, I need the money. Let's do it. Um, And so the entire thing is just like him falling first and he it's it's exactly in the vein of how to be a wallflower and wicked game by kate bateman um both of them have heroes who fall first and then the entire rest of the book is just them convincing like Mm -hmm. the heroine to just Mm -hmm. fall in love with them because they're like she's not ready yeah they're like she's not ready yet i don't want to scare her but also like i would like lie die kill for her stuff like that so it was very cute and it was just and like the cover they're both smiling it's that one um, the orange one with the smiles. Yes. Ugh. It was so cute. And just like the little... Mm. Yeah. Uh, totally recommend it. There were, I think, uh, four sex scenes in that one, which was really nice. And um, Beverly... <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, hang on, let me recommend this book. Um, also, just so you know, this is how many sex scenes there are. Hey, people find Critical this information valuable. Information. <laughs> It is because you don't know. know. You don't because I, I have another. <laughs> I have another one that I read that I loved, contemporary. But that bitch was closed door, even though her second book was open door, and I was so perplexed. Um, but on this note, uh, Beverly E. Crick narrate. I think is going to narrate the audiobook. She narrated the author's first one in the series, and she's such a great narrator that I am so excited to listen to this. It's out at the end of um, December. I think uh January oh end of January so got a little time to wait but I would definitely recommend recommend requesting on NetGalley or pre-ordering because the cover is lovely itself even if you hate the book uh one duke down by Anna Bennett okay yeah it's that one yeah I remember the the cover yep yep um so that was a definite win of my last two weeks of reading there you go I uh, let me say let well let's stick with the historical vein, um, because two of the three other books I read that I want to recommend were historicals, um, and you have read both of them. No, oh, nice. so I guess we can just knock those out in one go. The first being Amelie Howard's The Duke in Question. Mm, um, mm-hmm. yep. I mean, I've been in a reading slump, so it took me longer than I think it would have if I had read it another at another point in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, spies that aren't technically rivals, but aren't they're one of them's trying to arrest the other one because she might be a traitor, maybe. 
But also, she doesn't really know who she's working for, and neither does he. And mm-hmm. also, they're just having sex all over the place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A notable also, tree scene. Handcu- okay, this is my one qualm with this book, though. Yeah. Is um, Chekhov's handcuffs. Because, yeah. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's, it, uh, it, uh, technically, they were used. Yeah. But yep. just the number of times that mm-hmm. he was like, I'll have to restrain you. And she was like, promise. <laughs> and then only for us to get a, like, jump to the moment after. After. Mm-hmm. Where she's like, we still, still got handcuffed, but which you is... only get aftercare. And I'm like, Amelie. <laughs> it's Amelie. so weird because you got, like, the scene after. Like, you got, like, them. Because I think they still, like, had sex, like, after that. So, like, I don't no, know what. It was, did, it was... did they not? It, I'm it just. Was like, it seemed like maybe they were going to because he was like okay. okay. And he I'm just. Like, I was very confused. Yeah. I, that was my. I mean, it was still great. It was a great book. Mm-hmm. I recommend. Um, the plot was a little much for me. I didn't know like what mm. was going on. I was just along for the ride because I was mm. like, there is a lot of secrets and identities and mm-hmm. mysteries. Who's to say? Um, and I think if you're reading it along a long period of time too, I think that, that could also be harder, confusing. It, yeah. It took me yeah. Because I. I think I like binged it in a night. Yeah. I like, and I was so obsessed because he's such a dick in the beginning. I never and thought I was he like, was. Oh, I did. It I will just like because I identify with him more than <laughs> maybe that's what it is. I well, don't even like, remember what he was like in the beginning. Actually, Hold um, on. he was just very because he so he's best friends with her older brother, right? And so she wasn't supposed to be on this boat. He was like angry about that and then they had never so he also thought obnoxious yeah so he thought she was just like a like a a vapid like heiress because she had to like present herself that way in society and um he like fell for it and he was like this creature is like terrible i never want to be alone that's her defense she like doesn't want to get caught being a spy so she's like yeah i'm gonna be awful so it's and she's a great actress hated her right she was just yeah. genuinely very good yeah. at being awful yeah <laughs> he wasn't a dick well he was but it was he more wasn't he in, was like, in a lot of you are the most annoying human being <laughs> yeah. i've ever interacted with and like he and had some I pretty like fuck you. <laughs> he had some pretty cutting remarks um but i loved him i was never like anti him um and then he was also is also rare he had a divorce so like mm-hmm. he had married another like fellow spy and she was also on the boat so then there was like jealousy and like all that um and so then they got divorced it was a, because like, they like marriage though yeah because they were they were like lovers once and then they got married for the job and then they divorced amicably um and so he just didn't want um like she oh wait she his ex-wife was like i think she's a lot smarter than you're giving her credit for he's like no like <laughs> There's like nothing going on in her head, and ex wife was like, Um, <laughs> I think you're A, horny, and B, wrong. So <laughs> she said, Actually, LOL, I can't wait for this to play out. And I respect and that. And play it did. Oh, that was a good one. I liked um, that one a that lot. One was good. That one actually, I had that one too. I reread it via the audiobook when it came out. So that one was also on my list. Um, the next one, let's do historical again. I uh, read. Last TBR, I was reading Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. So I finished that, really liked it. And then I went back and restarted The Perks of Loving a Wallflower. And I also loved that one. They're both very cute, very fun. And now I feel like I have to go back and reread book one. But I have so many other things to read. Um, the but they were just like so my, sweet. They're like my go-to, like if you're yeah. new to historical. Yeah. I think they're such I, an easy entry point. Exactly. That that's kind of also how I feel. Um, like Tessa Dare, like mm-hmm. pretty light, um, humorous writing. Um, because I know Erica Ridley is, uh, that one. Her whatever that book is called, the first one, the Winchesters. Um, that was one of my uh, first like, the Duke Heist. For, oh my gosh. Yeah, the Duke Heist. That was one of my first forever ones. Um, so I think that was my goddamn good first mass market. I mean, that one's Mass Market Max, but, like, first yeah. page cover type. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so pretty. That cover is gorgeous. I think we've uh, her, talked about this before on here. I know. Her hair. I'm obsessed Lover's with her hair in that book. It's like a cinnamon roll. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Um, but, yeah, nothing really to add besides that the audiobooks are both very good of those. Um, and I was actually very surprised on the level – like. The, um, to talk about sex scenes again um the amount of sex scenes in nobody's princess or like the explicitness of them i feel like it was even a little bit um 
more explicit than book one. Um, I know oh. book I, – I did, like, there was, like, a few things. I was like, oh, my God. They're going I for it. Say, I thought it was – I thought there was only the one. I, there was well, only – a long time since I read Yeah, the there was, thing. like, one one or two, but I thought, like, the wording um, was, like, pretty good. The only problem I had was, like, I didn't really feel a lot of heat from their relationship outside of, like, the actual sex scenes because – so many of like a searing kiss that left them both breathless that was a, like a phrase or like similar but you never got the kiss in detail it was just like the kiss left them breath- breathless rather than like showing us the kiss and like what was happening um so i found that to be a bit of an issue just like stylistically because it was a lot into the heist plot and stuff or not really even heist but just like pulling one over on some uh was it oh, factory it, owners? Yeah, or something. It was like along I those mean, lines. it's vigilante justice. It's the yeah. Winchesters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so those were very good, and I recommend them all. Those ones are good if you're like, uh, if if you're in a low romance, high plot mm-hmm. type, and and relatively low angst. I think all of them. Too. Yeah, it's really. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're like heist or heist adjacent books. Yep. Yep. Yep shenanigans if you will shenanigans. Um, my other historical was the lady gets lucky ah i did see you read that one too i'm gonna shoot this one uh my one issue was that it was too long i had the same mm. feeling that i got with a lot of sarah mclean's books where i was like why are we really? why is it still going like oh, i mean i, I had was in time. love with that book yeah um i think i could the, see that well i also think maybe i mean i don't know i i normally go for the I should clarify, I really enjoyed this book. I'm now yes. complaining about it. I really recommend it. <laughs> That's this me with is everything, why I'm though. Bringing it. Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know if, like, the the wallflower rake is overdone for me in this moment. As if that's not, like, half of historical romance. Because normally yeah. I love a wallflower rake pairing. Um, but this one, by the end of it, I was like, my guy, just marry her. Like, <laughs> come on, Kit. I think it was just a little bit too long for me. Yeah. Well, also because I got – I listened to the audiobook and I got like halfway mm-hmm. through because you get – it's a house party and they're mm-hmm. doing their little lessons and then halfway mm-hmm. through the book, the the first book wraps up or what. I, didn't, I yep. didn't read the first book because you told Don't. me not to. But like yep. Uh, yep. the, you know, the scandal happens and everybody leaves the house party. And I was like, okay. And then I looked at the timestamp and it was like 49%. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. what do you mean? Lobster the Thermidor. Has now, the premise has now wrapped up. How are we only yeah. halfway through the book? And then it mm-hmm. was like two other books then proceeded to happen. And people were dying. And scandals <laughs> were unfolding. And I was like, wow, we are really doing a lot here. There is yeah. a lot going on. Um, I feel like she – I think maybe – this is just a guess. Joanna realized how much of a flop book one was that <laughs> – Maybe she understood that people weren't going to read it. So she had to add, like, <laughs> all this shit to book two to, like, get you there. I don't know. I don't think I had that issue. My, I mean, I think my only issue was really that I wanted it to be just a little bit more spicy. I thought there were a lot of, like, teasing moments and a lot of, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, teaching moments. But not necessarily, like, full on, like, sex scenes. Um, or they didn't go as fully into, like, uh, the food theme because there was one where she was, like, licking off, like, her fingers with, like, um, like, sticky bun, like, icing and that was really hot. But, again, like, it didn't lead to much. Um, she, like, spanked him with a wooden spoon, but that was, like, behind closed well, doors. she didn't, though. It was – Yeah. Because it's an epilogue yeah. thing where she's like, hey, I learned yeah. what I can do with a wooden spoon. And I was like, wait, what, <laughs> what are you doing with a wooden spoon? <laughs> I know. What? Um, Check but off I, soon. <laughs> I actually I really liked this one because um, I've said before I don't do well with like terrible characters like her mother. Like her mother was just heinous, and I actually really liked how at the end she was like, you know, I don't have to see you, I don't have to engage with you, and I'm not going to. And I really appreciated that. Um, she like put her mother in her place, and then it was just done. Like she didn't have to like make space in her life for her. Um, So I really appreciated that. But the mother was a gigantic wench for the first half of that book. (laughs) Well, for all of it, really. And all Um, of it, yeah. Made me hungry, though. It was good. It was cute. I do like Kit. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm excited for you to read the next one. 
The Bride Goes too. Rogue. That I book too. is oof. Demon. That one's Preston, right? Oh yeah. Every time they mentioned oh, Preston, yeah. I was like, hee hee hee. <laughs> it's so good. And I realized, um, I don't think I talked about it in our Midnight's episode, but I put that one for um question. And I didn't realize the entire premise of the book is like her asking him a question of when are we fucking getting married? Um, so it fits that even even more (laughs) but um i cannot wait for you to get to like the masquerade like banging oh my body is oh god and then you see and then you see uh the duke and nelly oh my god you are in for a ride it's so good it's so So good those were were all my historicals Mm -hmm. um another historical series that i wrapped up or at least the two that are out is um by ann gracie I read The Rake's Daughter. Um, that one was very cute. I had read the first one in that series, The Scoundrel's Daughter, um, that I'm going to actually be talking about in our next episode, which is um, kids and historical romances. So I'll go as in-depth as I can because I remember none of it. Um, but but um, I really liked the audiobooks of those two. They're very light, very fluffy. The writing was very nice, um, fun. Um, again, do I remember? No. <laughs> Did I have a good time? Yes. Um, I don't That's know why my <laughs> you guys aren't getting exactly. any details. <laughs> I don't have any. I'm like looking at my review to see if I can like pull anything. Um, but they they both have at least one sex scene. I know that and <laughs> read them. I guess. Uh, audiobooks go. good. <laughs> so I did audiobooks good. <laughs> Next, and then <laughs> because that was very very quick, I also read um. <laughs> The Designing Debutantes series by Sabrina Jeffries, um, A Duke for a Diana, and then What Happens in the Ballroom, which is an arc, I believe, that comes out in March of 2023. Um, a Duke for Diana was like a sniper agent. I did not expect it to be that good. Um, again, I think it's one where he kind of starts off a little bit dickish, but it's major, majorly just like fish out of water. He comes into a dukedom, and he has no idea how to act, and so she and her sisters have been um, – embroiled in scandal because her father divorced their mother and he married another woman and it's a whole thing so they like made their own business um worked really hard for it and basically they designed debutantes you know kind of how like a pageant coach would be um Mm -hmm. and so it was like very funny and like i said like he had no idea like how to be a duke and like he didn't know he was used to like penny pinching so like the prices and everything and she was obviously um the like main sister leading it Great time. Very funny. Sabrina Jeffries, I need to read more of her stuff. Both books were hilarious. Um, and the audiobook was great for that one. Um, the sex scenes, <laughs> no for everything. Um, I have parentheses three in my review. So there were three. Um, they weren't too long, but they were, they were pretty good. They're pretty good. Um, and then the second book, What Happens in the Ballroom. Um, I also had a really, a really good time with that one. Um, that one was a widow widower um she, or widow i don't fucking know um Is she a man or a woman a woman a widow. <laughs> yeah i know that's why i said i don't know to cover up for the fact that i do know and i know that i'm wrong yep. uh, <laughs> come on now um but she gets an earl and i too would like an earl and um yeah the book used to be called an earl for eliza and then it got changed what to what happens in the ballroom which is confusing because a duke for diana um but mm-hmm. They had they rocked some carriages, and it was again very funny. The writing was great. Um, so, two series that I haven't seen talked about a lot, but they were pretty good, and they're still continuing. They're not finished yet. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, my only other one is a contemporary. It's a We've forever a too. book. Standard disclaimer that I oh I saw you read forever. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't come out until July, so I feel like probably shouldn't say too, too much about it, but Mm -hmm. just to put it on everyone's radars, as if the cover doesn't speak for itself. It's Um, very pretty. Forget Me Not by Julie Soto, who, she has a really big fan fiction following. I've never read any of her fan fiction, but I've had a lot of people be like, oh my gosh, I love her fan fiction. No, it's not. It's not. It's just an original. Oh. Well, the art looks like Raylo. It does bit. look a little bit right, like Raylo. It is yeah. not. It's just um, I, my understanding. Well, I was anyway, I was wondering. I, I read the summary. Told. I was like, "How does that?" Gotcha. It's not. It's just original work. Um, That's cool. 
But all, well, and also I think it's a fan fiction artist that they had do the cover. Yeah, that would make sense. Want to say with an asterisk that I don't actually <laughs> know that I just think that, so I could be wrong. Anyway, Relatable. um, he, uh, she is a wedding planner whose mother has been married I think sixteen times. Oh. Um, so she has a lot of ex-step siblings that she ropes into things. So she does not believe in like lasting commitment, right? But she is mm-hmm. a wedding planner. She loves weddings. Um, he is a florist who uh, he he originally, you know, he's very grumpy. He went to architecture school, but his father left him this um, flower shop. And so now he's branching out and getting more creative. Uh, and they used to work together. Like she would, you mm-hmm. know, use him mm-hmm. as a, a mm-hmm. vendor. Um, and it's a second chance romance. So they dated and then something happened and now they have not spoken in years. Um, I have not was it together. juicy? Like the, the well, big so secret? It was a bit, uh, okay. Well, so the, the way that this book, it is now he, and I'm going to eat my words a little bit. Cause I think in the last TBR Tuesday was the one where I was complaining about first person, mm. multiple Pre- parties oh, and yeah, it's first yeah. person present. Yeah. So, like, what? These things that we don't like, it works. Don't worry about it. Same. I immediately um, ate my words after we were talking about yeah. that too with the nanny. I it was like, wait. Like, it kidding. has to be done really yeah. well for it Yeah, to work. yeah, so it's yeah. first person, present, multiple POVs. But yeah. her POVs are in the present. Like, her chapters are in the present. Mm-hmm. What's going on now? So there's something that has happened in the past. She has to work with him again after years of not speaking because she gets this big wedding um, that will, like, make her career, get her all this publicity. But they are friends with him. Like, there's a family connection so that, like, gotcha. hard, they will be using him as the florist. Mm-hmm. So they have to work together again. And it's rough. It's, <laughs> like, whew, go, uh, she, like, I think throws up the night before she has to go talk to him. Same. Like, Is she a cancer? Because same. She, he, like, won't even look at her in the meeting. Like, he doesn't speak to her the entire yeah. time. It's, oh, my. oh, and you're, like, what happened between y'all? Anyway, so her chapters are all in the present and his chapters are all in the past. So you get to uh, watch their relationship develop initially in the past at the same time as you are getting the second chance happening Mm -hmm. now with them working on this wedding. That's really cool. Mm, And see – it is mm, so good. And it's books like those and like like when I was talking about the nanny, like – I always feel like I'm being very, like, critical or, like, very judgy of certain things. But I'm, like, it's because, like, when it works, it really, really works. And so, like, it's harder for me to, like, stomach the ones that don't quite work or are, like, mm-hmm. middle of the road, especially in contemporary. Um, So that's why, like, The Nanny, I thought the first person present and the, the like, dual POV really worked because, like, his was sporadic. Like, you didn't get a lot of his. And so mm-hmm. it built attention. And this also seems like it, like, kind of innovated in a, in a little bit that it's a little bit different. Yeah, I think it's, like, um, yeah. I mean, this is the only Julie Soto I've read. Yeah. I mean, this is her first published book, but I mean, I haven't mm-hmm. read any of her fan fiction, just know that she has a lot of um, fans. But mm-hmm. I I mean, I, I thought it was excellent. I don't know. I feel like there are not a ton of other authors that could pull off, like, first person, yeah. present, dual POV, and dual timelines. Yeah. That sounds really that's cool. very tricky, but it, oh, it worked. The drama. That Oof. sounds, that sounds dramatic. Oh, uh, I'm excited. And, oh, and he, he – so he's a florist, right? He has these yeah. tattoos of, like, rare or extinct flowers. That's hot. He and can prune my buds any day. Is. Listen, and then he gets a new <laughs> tattoo, and she's like, whoa, I haven't seen this. But, like, you can't really see it. You don't know what it is. And yeah. so she's like, what is this new tattoo <clears throat> that I've never seen? I don't even like tattoos. Mm. Oh, the we should do an episode on tattoos because I've got a yeah. few. I've got a oh, few. Oh, it's also it's, – it's pretty spicy. It is, mm. it's, a, it's a pretty steamy book. Nice. Mostly from his POV. I think you only get one. I suppose because that was in the past, hers. probably. Right. So it's, it's mostly his chapters, but I think Hell one yeah. or two from hers. It was very Hell good. Yeah. It was very good. So it doesn't come out till July, but. That's very exciting. I'm very excited. I can't wait. Normally, Forever does like the Read Now and Neck Alley, so I'm going to have to zoom over. If, uh, like, yeah, if I don't they know put when it on. Yeah, whenever that happens, because knowing that she's got or a lot of fans, I'm to, I don't know. Yeah. What the um, but I also will be requesting that because that seems yes. like a great time. Um, and I've also I've been noticing a little bit like a little bit more spice in contemporaries lately. Um, I would that are like it. published, which she... go off like 
ramp it up that's a what we though. wanted i suppose maybe i don't know if it's like a book talk thing um like if they I realize know, like they we understand were getting less spicy. i know me too me too but like the nanny was like the steamiest contemporary like traditionally published that i have ever read um i think well and I yeah but i'm i'm excited i'm here for it um on another spicy note, I read The Stand-Up Groomsman by Jackie Lau. Uh, that one just came out in October by Berkeley. Um, very cute cover. Um, it was it was lovely. I really liked the audiobook, although I was not the biggest fan of the narrators just because um, her narrator, during the sex scene, she was like kind of monotone, so it was like a little uncomfortable, and I don't think the writing mm. like felt uncomfortable, so I think it was a narrator issue. And then his narrator uh, also just sounded like, like very young almost, and like, um, like a trickster, which is like his his like character is like that. He's a stand up comedian, um, mm-hmm. but I wasn't the biggest fan of the narration, but I still liked the audiobook, and it was a very fast listen. Um, but uh, on the stand up comedy note, he like did like he like performed bits like throughout the book, which actually really worked. Like they were very mm-hmm. funny. Um, I had read another one from Berkeley. It was another stand up one, and that one had like zero jokes. I don't even know <laughs> what happened. It was like one star. Do not know what happened with that book. I, n- so unfunny. Um, but this one very good. It took me forever to realize that the reason it's called the stand up groomsman yeah. is because I know. I I have I have flaws, okay? I'm flawed. <laughs> and uh, when I made that connection, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And it was just it was very good and very cute. And I I want to go back and reread book one, but it doesn't have the best rating, so I don't know if I want to like um r- I don't know. I don't know what I want to do in that note. But I recommend book two because <laughs> I don't want to hate book one. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Um, and then I suppose, like, if you don't have any more, I can go okay. into my next few and then we can wrap it up. Um, on a less spicy note, rip my entire soul in half. The Wedding Ringer by Carrie Re, Re-, 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 Re- something like that. The audiobook said it correctly and I did not. Um, I had read Lucy on the Wild Side a few months back and it was open door. It was open door. It was very mm-hmm. hot. Not like crazy hot, but it was good. I was surprised. I didn't think it was going to be. And so... When I requested The Wedding Ringer um, from PRH Audio, I was like, okay, I'm going to get some open door. I operated under that entire assumption because it was like they like made suggestive comments, like they talked about sex, like it was a very like sex positive Mm book. (sighs) The book itself was great. I loved it. It was so fun. He was uh, like, what did I call? He was like a pediatrician who owned a cabin. Like, and I think he had glass. Like, I don't know. He was so fucking hot. It was so good. Um, but it was a closed door. They like got it on in his cabin, and your girl didn't get to see it. I was oh, I was going through it. I was so devastated. I'm still so devastated because I know Carrie can write. I'm so sad. It's okay. I'm okay. It's fine. It's fine. My heart for you. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I let it out. I, I don't think I'll ever recover. Um, <laughs> bold and dramatic statement. But who am I if I'm not making them? Um, I just want to know what happened. He was tattooed, um, and you know he gets a little freaky. Like I just I needed to see it. And I didn't. Do we know? You say that oh, like yeah. I, you're like obviously. I'm like yeah. This book oh, I've obviously. never read. Obviously. <laughs> obviously, he was just the cutest, and like they got off like on the wrong foot um, at the beginning because she was like having a meltdown in a in a princess ball gown because she was uh, doing a I'm like a me. gig. <laughs> She's, like, doing a gig for her sister's uh, party planning company. And so she was being the princess. And then he was, like, laughing at her from next door. And she's like, oh, that was so rude. And then they were in the wedding together. Um, Again, I sure did love it. But I also sure did weep the <laughs> tears of sorrow <laughs> at, like, 4 a.m. Because I was just, like, staring at my ceiling just, like, I'm so excited for this. I was. It was, like, I should have been going to bed. I wasn't. And I was just, oh whatever it's fine i'm i'll never be fine again but we are who we are 
Um, I reread X's and O's by Amy Leah. Love it. Great audiobook. Um, comes out in January. Keep that one on your radar. Fantastic. Um, and then I read uh, or I reread This May End Badly by Samantha Markham. That's YA. I loved it before. I loved it this time. Um, they're at a boarding school. Um, very cute. It's like prank wars. And uh, she goes to the all girls school and then he goes to the all guys school. And they're um, trying to keep like basically the two schools are going to merge at the end of the year. Um, and so she is just trying to get revenge on all of these guys and her arch nemesis is at the rival school. And then he's the cousin of the hero. And it was very cute. There's like a secondary romance in there. Um, it was perfect for autumn. I didn't remember, but there was like a Thanksgiving scene. And so I saw the author post about it. So I was like, oh, I'll read that before Thanksgiving. And then uh, the last one was, <laughs> and then, uh, Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Oh my God. It was adorable. I was not, prop- I mean, it says unfairly cute. And yeah, like it was it the cutest you. fucking, it was the cutest thing ever. Um, I will note that the the summary lays pretty heavily into the fact that they're like going through um this like outdoor survival esque thing. Basically, um, there's a scholarship opportunity from this like big lawyer, and she's like she's got a a whole um like process of getting like ten or twelve students. Um, picking them and then they go on this like retreat for like a week and then they kind of like have to self-sustain and stuff and then they go on a bigger one that's like outdoors and like survivalist and they have to do all this stuff and that actually is like a really small part of the book a lot of it is really just like um the second chance romance between um the two it's kind of second chance because they were friends as kids and then he got popular and she did not at around like 13 or 14 um, but his POV was just the cutest thing ever. <laughs> I just – like I read the – I haven't read the first um, Brown Sisters book, but I read the second two and they were very funny and very good. But I read them via audiobook. And so I don't think I like really comprehended Talia's humor um, because like just reading the – like the e-arc of this, I was like hysterically laughing. It was just so good. Um and I can't recommend it enough. I am pre-ordering it from the Target uh, pre-order sale that will be over by the time this launches. But Just I'm ready. I and like the cover is so cute. Yeah. I'm ex- I'm excited. I will probably end up just like reading it very shortly <laughs> because now I want more. Um, and then I also saw the – she has like a Christmas one. I think it's wrapped up in you, um, Talia Hibbert, um, mm-hmm. that I want to read. And yeah, wrapped up, to, wrapped up in you published in 2020 so Hmm. talk about that in the christmas episode yeah i'll have to read that (laughs) yeah i'm excited um i don't know if it was in kindle unlimited but we shall see oh kobo original so i have a i have a kobo gift card so there you go here we are well we did it we did it that's all that's all from me i think yeah um so yeah yeah, hopefully y'all have some Good recommendations. Things mm-hmm. to read. <sighs> Post yeah, Thanksgiving I... break. Oh Rip. god. I was gonna say, what am I currently reading? I'm currently reading um The Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. Um that one comes mm-hmm. out from Berkeley mid twenty twenty three. Very good so far. Um he the demon is like the cutest thing ever. He got a soul after not having one for two hundred years. <laughs> And, like, he made, like, a bad bargain, and so he has a soul, and he's like, I don't know what to do with these fucking emotions. And then she accidentally summons him, and there's no way for them to get out of the bargain. So, like, she summon- summoned him by name, and there's, like, in the demon laws, you can't, like, leave without getting her soul, but she wants to keep it, and it was an accident, so he's just very perplexed. Um, I'm, like, 80% through. I will say it's a little bit long. Um, and it's th- – there's going to be a conflict. And it's going to be – a lot of it I think is external but not maybe in the way I'd want because it's – I think it's going to be a little bit too angsty or like too much because I just think the book itself is just a very like low angst fluffy thing. But it'll be at least minimum four stars and we'll see um, 
if it can get to five stars on how it concludes. Um, and then I'm also just rereading Lord of Scoundrels for our Lord of Scoundrels episode. Oh, I need to reread um, that one. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. I know. It's it's I'm very good. Too. Obviously, you know. <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. I, d- I do. Mm-hmm. My audiobook hold of uh, Love on the Brain just came in. Ooh. So that will be my – the next audiobook that I tackle. And then I'm going back to the Joanna Shoup. I have a bunch um, of like old net galley arcs that I just mm, never I didn't read in time for publish the or the for pub date. Yeah. And so I'm trying to like knock out all of the <laughs> all the various net galley arcs that are like yep. already out. Uh, exactly. Love on the brain is one and the Joanna Shoop is another. So I'm like <laughs> a, a pro tip. If you don't have time, grab the audiobook of an already released title. I've done uh, yeah. it multiple times. Saves you a lot of effort, it's, <laughs> and that's what you still doing. get that that percentage boost. I am really trying because I have some like really exciting upcoming ones, but I'm like I need to get, I, I need to finish the yeah. ones that are already published. Yeah, I I went through that uh, this summer. I had like five that I had just avoided, and I I went through and did it all because I couldn't stand it. But yeah, um, I think that's well, it um have a good week yes um happy christmas and or holiday season um whatever you celebrate and uh like we said we'll be back with the christmas episode and just other holiday romances um on i think the 13th don't quote me but i think that's the date Uh, um somewhere in there mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna go get ready for a date (laughs) yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) i don't like that (laughs) To quote my dad, a hot date. That's I told him I was seeing someone, and now every time I'm like, I have plans tonight. He's like, oh, got a hot date, and I'm like, this is why I didn't tell you for the first several weeks that I was seeing anyone. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, my mom called Caroline my podcast lady. Yes, <laughs> she kept because we got I tickets to, to be the- referred to. Because we got tickets to like the steamy like convention or whatever it's called. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, like the person I podcast with, whatever. And she's like, oh, your podcast lady. I'm like, mom, <laughs> she's like my age. <laughs> Without fail, she's just like, you're a lady. And I'm like, multiple times, I was like, she's not like, <laughs> she's not a lady. <laughs> no, yes, I am. I am your <laughs> podcast lady. It sounds like a hookup, is what it's it so, You know, like you've got your like, Booze guy. You're my special friend. You got your <laughs> You are my special friend. The podcast um, lady. I truly should change your name on my phone to my podcast lady. Podcast lady. Uh, um, so yeah, on that note. <laughs> oh my god. That was something fun to occur. Um bye bye. Have a glorious Tuesday and or day you're listening to this. And see you on Friday for Kids and Historical Romance. Woo.